Welcome back to the Sports Source, the segment brought to you by Safety Systems. Safety and security, it's right there in the name. But uh, that not only includes the installation and maintenance of security system, it also means testing. Businesses, for example, some of them are required to test their fire safety systems and their equipment annually. Safety Systems does that for you. VFL JJ Serlis is the man to call. He can tell you all about it. Give him a shout this week at Safe T Systems. Okay, this week Ohio State uh, came out and announced that they had run models that showed that with the current level of social distancing, they could get 20 to 22,000 people in their stadium of 104,000. Okay, that's ballpark Tennessee. So that's about 20,000 here. Um, but the question is, how do you get them in and out? And who gets in? I mean, Tennessee, obviously, they don't have a finalized plan at this point. They, everybody's flying by the seat of their pants. One would assume, and I'm just going to ask you guys to spitball here, one would assume that biggest donors are the ones that get the seats. Agreed? Do you think that's it? I mean, isn't that the... That seems like that would be... The, I, if, if I'm UT and I don't want to tick somebody off, <laughs> it's going to be the biggest boosters. Yeah, those are going to be uncomfortable conversations that they still have to figure out. I think you may see ticket prices go up because obviously demand uh, you know, or supply, I suppose, is going to go down. Uh, so you have to figure that out. You know, how much more do you charge? I think you're definitely going to see temperature checks at the uh, entrance, uh, those kind of things. But there's no good solution for this because somebody's going to get locked out and somebody's going to be mad. And I think the schools are, have to hope that people will understand these are extraordinary circumstances. But good luck. Well, <laughs> I, think that, I think we should. I, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm willing to. I've lost some things in all of this, and I'm accepting of that. Um, there are other people who say, no, as soon as you give up an inch, you lose a mile. I get that side of it. But I wonder if you're the guy who's giving, you know, X amount and your number, and they can fit 21,000 in there and you're number 21,001, <laughs> aren't you going to be a little angry that somebody else is giving a dollar more than you and they get in? Uh, your thoughts on how Tennessee divides this money-wise well, or seat-wise? I, I think the, the best way to probably do it would be to not have it absolute, all right? This is who gets tickets to every single game every week. I think that's the way to maybe work around, hey, this isn't fair for this group, this group, this group. Uh, you didn't make the cut, that type of thing. I, hopefully there'll be that sort, those sorts of, uh, of arrangements done to where, hey, let's get everybody in. Everybody's gonna sacrifice here. Nobody, uh, nobody's going to be uh, happy with all of it, but I, I just think there might be a way to kind of spread it around a little bit versus making it absolute. I, I also wonder though, uh, when you're talking about people being okay with things, let's say you're a big time donor and you have bought luxury box and that includes X amount of booze and food. And this year they come in and say, well, due to social distancing, we're not opening this part of the stadium. You're gonna have to sit here. And we're not going to do booze this year because let me tell that's another question. If you expect people to social distance in that stadium and be nice about it, I don't know that you can add alcohol to that mix. You've already got people going crazy in this country without alcohol. You put alcohol in the mix and then tell somebody, hey, six feet apart, that's how you get a fist fight. But if you're taking, if you're taking somebody, I donated X, I'm supposed to sit here, I need to get this, this, and this, and instead I'm sitting here, how much do they complain? Do they look at it and say, it's one of those years, I've got it, or, hey, I want this off my bill and this off my bill. I just <laughs> think there's all kinds of things that go into that. Uh, but let me show you some numbers, okay? Uh, let me put this thing up here. If we take the, uh, well, first of all, Ted Le Leonsis, the uh, owner of the Wizards and Capitals, had an interesting quote this week. He was talking about, I hate when people just throwing out ideas and talking. The other day, someone said, well, you should social distance to bring your fans into the building. Well, okay, we need 20,000 people socially distance in line. I mean, we would need 22 entrances, two feet per person. Each person's two feet thick, some thicker than others, uh, and six feet apart. So two feet for the next person. At 880 people, that line stretches one mile long. Who knows how long that takes to get in. That got me thinking. And let's apply this to the Ohio State model, okay? Ohio State estimates 20 to 20 to estimates 20 to 22,000 people at their stadium. Neyland's about the same. Let's throw it at 21,000 for the sake of argument. All right, you get 21,000 people in there. Neyland has 26 gates for the sake of argument. Let's say you spread out those 21,000 people evenly. That's 808 people per gate at two feet per person, six feet in between people. 
That's 26 lines of 1.22 miles each. In other words, if you're at gate five, your line starts in the Tennessee River. <laughs> so uh, mile long lines, that doesn't even include, how do you get them out? What about a restroom? Is it like uh, elementary school where, all right, this row can now go to the bathroom. I, I just, I'm all for it. I think they'll figure out some way to do it, but I have no clue of how they're gonna do this. Yeah, I hadn't even considered the, the guys getting out of the stadium. That, oh. that is, I mean, anybody who's tried to get out of any event, it's 5,000 people in about the size of the people's desk. It's just, that's, that's what it is. If it's a cold November rain. Oh my and, goodness. And yeah. Guns N' Roses is playing. <laughs> but if it's a cold November rain and you're sitting there and you're in the group that they say, yeah, you, you don't get to leave until an hour after the game ends because we're socially distancing. We're doing it by time slot. How many people are actually going to sit there, mmm, this is fun? <laughs> They're not. It's going to be imperfect. And, and another thing is you're not going to have all of those at the same time. I know when the Dolphins had their plan, they talked about staggering the entrances into the gates. Now, how much, how realistic is that? I, it's going to be imperfect. And maybe, yeah. maybe it's going to be much better the second, the third, the fourth. Uh, as you do it, you figure out different ways around it. But people aren't going to follow all the rules. It's just, it's just not realistic. You just do your best, the best you can. Well, and as you go in, Ohio State also looked at it and said, look, if we ease up the social distancing, by the end of the year, you're looking at forty to 50,000 people in the stadiums. Mm -hmm. And for Tennessee, you know, you ballpark, it's probably going to be about the same. There, that's a different state. Social distancing may be different in this state from that state. But anyway, 21,000 people is what they're targeting. And I think that's a good ballpark for Tennessee fans to be thinking about right now. What Tennessee comes up with and how they pull it off, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes because it's unprecedented like all of this mess. Okay, when we come back, Jeremy Pruitt, another week, another hall of great commitments. We'll compare UT to the... Uh, other uh, schools in the conference, and they're right up against it in terms of total commitments. What's that mean for what's coming next? Come on back on the sports world.